Hello everyone. I've made another quite a quick card um, with some new stamps that I bought um, a few weeks ago. It was a new launch from uh, Crafty Individuals who are a company. I like their stamps. I like to follow them. They're red rubber ones so you can do lots with them. Um, but I just thought I'd use one for a new home card because we occasionally we need new home cards. Uh, but not all the time. But I, you know, I don't know. I, I just thought it would be a nice card particularly because the stamps themselves and I can show you them this is um, the stamp set it's uh, CI558 and it's it is, it's kind of like a street scene but of course you can cut these elements out you could leave them with this background in it and they're very very quirky anyway so that's the outside um, I'll take you through the process of how I arrived at this and that that's obviously quite straightforward but it wouldn't be me if it didn't have a pop-up and there's your pop-up I've also decorated the inside of this card which I thought was quite nice it's not it's not a big card it's a five by seven and as I've said before they're not always uh, five by seven it's the actual envelope that's five by seven um, this one's very slightly less but a nice and I use cream I very rarely use um, well it's more off-white I very rarely use an off-white colour because I, I like white cards but I'll, I'll take you through the process of what I've done okay so let's stick that over there so we take yourself a white card we'll be going back to that or cream card we're going back to that shortly that's five by seven the first thing I did actually I don't know why I had it in my head and I don't know if you noticed but in the background that says postcard just had it in my head that I wanted to use a postcard I kind of hidden it all really with um, with the stuff I've put on the front of it. So that started off life just as a piece of card that I printed on my computer. I literally just wrote postcard, did a rectangle, cut it out. That's all I did. Word, use the word document. Very, very simple. I did two to a page so that you've got them for the future then. That's 300 GSM. I really like heavyweight cardstock. I find that... Um, you, when you're using a thinner thinner weight, it, it shows. You can, of course, use thinner weights, and, and there's a place for them. But I prefer for backgrounds and um, p particularly embellishments that you're going to raise up with foam pads, and I'll show you that, I prefer to use a thicker weight. So the first thing I did is I gave it some colour. So I'll show you what I did. I took my one of these. I've not cut that very well. I'm using uh, Distress Oxides and for this I used Shabby Shutters which is kind of like, um, it looks very green on the thing but it, 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 it's kind of, I don't know really, it's kind, it is a greeny colour but it does remind me of French Shutters which is quite um, interesting. What I'm going to do actually is get a piece of paper, I'll use this piece of paper because I don't want to ruin my uh, cutting mat. And if I use my glass mat, it will be reflecting out and that will give you a headache. So, all I'm going to do, I'm going to be as rough as anything. And you may have seen by this one, I didn't completely cover it. I was heavier in some places than others. So basically, just went all over it. Like that. doesn't take very long at all. One thing you have to do with, particularly with oxides, you don't really have to do it with any other, um, with the ordinary distress, but you do have to do it, funnily enough, with other inks, is to put your uh, something underneath your fingers because what happens is, I've got a card there, what happens is this is wet, it takes a bit longer to dry, unlike other inks that tend to dry very quickly. Oh, let's stick that there, that's it. And what I didn't want to do is that's it so just go over it like that shade it where you want to but kind of try and cover the whole of the um, white but obviously much light more lightly in the middle okay so that's cool I then used um, and I, I don't know where it's gone because it was here I then used a oh, here it is. this which is you can use scissors, lots of people use scissors, to get this ragged effect there. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm rubbish with scissors, I definitely will cut myself if I do it. People do all sorts of things, they use knives, they use scissors, but 
this tool is actually meant for this. What's in here are some very sharp blades. In fact, I think I've had this a very long time. It's probably a bit worn down. And the idea is you hold it. And I'll use the one that is dry. I'll hold you hold it and you and you rough it up like this. And you can do it as much as as rough as you want to, as little as you want to. I think really, if you don't do it kind of heavily, and also the, the corners are quite difficult, unless you do it quite heavily, it, it, it doesn't really have any impact. Luckily on that one, or the it all because of the thickness of the card, you couldn't really do this if you were using a lighter weight uh, backing paper because it would just rip. And then that is probably is the best time then just to use the a pair of scissors. I didn't really want to see that line, but as I didn't cut it very well, that's my problem. And that's all you... It doesn't take very long. And that's what you do. So... And turn it around if you think and you can see it kind of rolls over it does make a mess um, but you know that's easily swept up so well that's quite nice just pull it back down and if it, there's any other bits I'll go back around this side I thought perhaps it's not as blunt as the other side this one and there you are and that gives you the sort of a, a rough effect which is kind of what I wanted um, not an old map effect because if it was an old map effect it would be there would be much bigger rips because now we can see the white on of the back of the card what we should do is highlight this and and we could do this in lots of ways we could highlight it with the darker color but i'm, I'm just going to go over it with the same color Very quick. There you go. And there we have our background. So this is not a, um, a lengthy card, unlike the last one I made. So that will be sitting on there, which is quite nice. And if you, and it, still, these things, you can always go back to them. If you think you don't like a particular corner, or there you are, you just rough it over a little bit. So that's that bit done. But as you can see, the main element the main element of this card are these lovely houses. So what I did, and I'm not going to um, bore you with uh, stamping this and then uh, embossing it. Basically what I did, I stamped it three times in order to get the layers and the one inside. So we used, that's a whole stamp that's a whole stamp and then I cut one up the three three stamps and I used this um, embossing powder that I found um, I, I went into Hobbycraft and I, there was something I, I, I wanted something and they didn't have what I wanted so I was having a little wander around a mooch and I found this and this is a cosmic shimmer one that's nothing unusual they do loads of stuff but it's ancient copper and I thought, I just thought, I, I wonder if that could look quite good. And I really like this effect. It makes such a change from having a black one. Um, this was a failed one because I missed the middle there, but that's a black one. And I just think it's very, it's not, um, I don't think it's a fine, as fine a powder as I normally use because this is more of a detail powder. And as you can see from the detail powder, you can see more of the, actual elements of the uh, stamp itself but that doesn't matter because by the time you've added some colour and done some bits and pieces to it it looks great so what I've done I have already cut out one and coloured it what I used for colouring now I've got lots of different types of colouring mediums but what I tend to use for colouring um, and, and I return to it every time. I either use the ink pads themselves, you know, smoosh them onto the glass mat, use a, a water brush, and then um, use a water brush like this. I'll show you what I mean. You should be able to see that over there. Smoosh it onto there. 
use a water brush and then paint onto things. I either use distress, the distress um, paints or I use um, inks or I use, um, I tend to prefer watercolour. I haven't really got my head around alcohol inks. It's a learning thing and I don't seem to have time to do the learning thing. But what I do use, and they still sell these, but I invested in these a few years ago and I have the full set, are Crafters Companion Spectrum Aqua Pens. And what these are, there's two set different types here. I've got loads of them over there. You can see this was a newer set. They've changed the shape of them. They also changed which did what. On, on these ones, they didn't have... Um, so on this, if you pull this end out, you've got a, a brush tip. And then you pull this one and you've got a, a detail tip. To be honest, I very, very rarely use a detail tip. Only if I want to highlight something that where I've not um, perhaps embossed it and I've just um, stamped it and you just want to bring some colour back, I use the... the um, detail tip but where you can see on these ones they didn't have <laughs> which was which but when they released a second range or a, they, they're all got different names they're just very slightly different colours but again brush and then detail but what I do I don't go directly I did on that pink actually but generally I don't go directly to the card the reason I went directly to the card on this one is because I decided to use antique linen over the top of it when it was plain so I think yeah I do have to colour one of these in because I haven't got enough coloured in so what I should do I should show you what I did so I just went over it this is how I um, I don't always use uh, these brushes for I had the whole set of these and I like I do like to keep the colours clean as clean as I can on the pads so I tend to use these um, is foam pads and all all of my ones will have the correct one underneath like um, it just makes life easier it's just how I am I, I do really like these but they're much more expensive than using these and I'd need you know about 70 of these um, and storage space would be a would be an issue so I'll just get out one of my one of my ones. So this is antique linen. Again, it's very easy to do. Put it on there. So these are um, you get different makes of these, and as you can see, the sponge is a bit bigger than the. But that doesn't make any difference. And what I did um, to colour the to give it this sort of shabbiness was just go over it with this sponge like this now you can go all over and if in fact if you were going to put this on and then add embellishments behind which I'm, I still have to do um, you could check you could change up the colors if you wanted to but basically just take the starkness of the white off that's what I wanted there you go put the lid back on that and put that there that's that done and then what I did I just used my I'll move that there. I just used my um, aqua pens to create not only what's there, you can see I've used different set of colours here. I just think it could be by the seaside, but it doesn't matter, does it? So we've got the full set there. Um, and it's just whatever you want to do really. So perhaps I'll ring the changes a bit this time and I'll do so this is how, this is why I use have a glass mat. The cutting mat is really good if you're going to be cutting things, obviously, because it's self-healing. But, as I said just now, the reason I'm using um, this on here is because of the glare of the glass mat coming back up to you. I think it's much better if it doesn't. So, just use my brush. Now, it, yeah, I think what I may have to do, because that may not be dry, is to use my heat tool now I did a few months ago I did buy a new heat tool um, that was going to be quieter but I tried it a couple of days ago and it doesn't work so that's all ready to go go back um, okay so the best thing to do is try and not have it on there for too long so get it to some sort of temperature and then just waft it over 
This is probably one of the first bits of equipment I ever bought. And I, I would imagine I've had this mm, 15 years. But back in the day, I, I, I didn't use... I, I kind of went off of embossing because I went into all the colouring side of things. But embossing is great because you, you still keep your definition after you've um, coloured it. Let's shine up. So what I'm doing now is taking off the bit of colour that went onto the... And that's the beauty of using embossing powder. So you can keep your shine like that. So decorating it. I can, you can either cut it all out first or um, in fact that's what I will do. I'll cut it out first because less area to colour basically. So I've got all different size scissors and depending on the mood I, um, I use whichever ones and I can't say to hand because they're all hanging by the side of me. I, I actually don't like fussy cutting. Some people think it's the best. Some people think it's the best thing about crafting. Oh, I'm just so not. I do have a machine um, that would uh, a, a digital cutting machine that would cut this for me. But the because of the background of this, it would also pick these lines out. If you had something that was a bit more solid, say like this uh, flower that I did. This is another Crafty Individual stamp. It would cut out all these different shapes for me. Um, as a whole, it would cut round it. But because of all these in the background, it would go, oh, I've got all these to cut, and it would start cutting all those, and then I'd, I'd just be losing the will to live. So, basically, um, quite a lot of people would... I think I just cut that chimney pot off of that one. And then quite a lot of people, as I say, they, what they do is they do all their stamping... And then they sit down of an evening and cut to their heart's content. Not generally when I sit down for the evening, I would be asleep. So now, should you use big scissors or little scissors? So that's a big pair, and this is a small pair. And I do have tiny, tiny pairs, but. Um, these are very good because they're easier to manage. They're very good because if you're cutting a long area, you have to keep going like that with these and they get caught up. So what I did... See, it doesn't take very long. It's just not my first love. Let's go in there. Also, the other thing, of course, those that are really brave enough and it looks like, oh, I don't know where, oh, there it is. Apologies. To get into the finer area, you can use a knife. And that's also the beauty of having a cutting mat on here, because otherwise I'd have to take everything off of here and put it on. And look over the other side, make sure it's all cut. That'll do your, your fine bits. And then you can go through... Like this. Sorry if I'm out of the way. Let's move that over there. Um, and then you can just... You're always meant to pull the knife towards you. You shouldn't be going around like this because uh, that's how accidents happen. Now, I'm not going to do... Let's have a look. Yep. So, we can... Cut that little piece there, cut that little piece there, cut across there, cut across there. Now that should be complete. Yes, it is. There you go. So that's a kind of a combination. Big scissors, little scissors, and a cutting knife. And that I actually really like that cutting knife because it's I like the shape of it. It's really nice. I am not very good with scalpels. I think they're very dangerous. Um, you just have to be confident in the way you do things. We all have preferences, don't we? So put my scissors back so I know where they are. That's the only reason I do it, so that I can find things. I can't bear looking, having to look everywhere. Right, let's go back to this. Because it's on the glass mat, obviously it's stayed open. It's, it's still um, malleable. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to look to see what colours I've done the others, just so that I don't replicate that. So I've done that one as a blue. So I think I'll do this one down here as blue. Now again, it won't 
um, obviously tape up on the um, areas where the embossing powder's been because that's like a plastic and it just resists that. But what it also has done, and perhaps I didn't um, have so much paint on this, what it has done, it's um, it's not as dark as it could be because of the, the distress oxide I put be behind it. With distress oxides, if you're not sure what they are, these are water uh, soluble. I, th I think that's what they call it. But if you was, if I was to wet this, then um, or this, say for example, any of the, anything that's covered with this, if I was to flip water on that and then put a tissue over it, it would take the colour out. So it's probably so you can see here. It's not it's not a very happy bunny about this bit here. But hey, so I I did before I coloured it, but I'm going to colour everything in. Um, one of the things about watercolour or gouache or any of those is that you can make them as strong as you want. So if you want to strengthen up the colour, you can do. But this is, I mean, it's it's kind of it's meant to be a. Um, it's not not serious. It's me it's meant to be just a, a, a ca no, not a casual. I can't even think of the word. Don't worry. So I cut that one out. Oh, was this one I was going to cut? No, I wasn't going to cut this one. So I won't. <laughs> I won't. I won't cut the next bit because it, this one was the one that was meant to go inside, and I've already cut it. So that's a problem. But I've got this one that I can put inside because obviously I can't join that. Silly Billy. It's all right. I've got a few. I can. I can just join them all together. There you go. I'll leave this too like this. Right, so the next colour. I've got a pink. Oops, sorry about that. <coughs> Excuse me. So, over we go. Let's just go over the whole thing. You could use pencils. You wouldn't have put if you if you were to use pencils on colouring these. Obviously, you wouldn't have the um, distress oxide in the background. I think it would just make it um, a bit of hard work, to be quite honest. Um, as you, as you may have noticed, <laughs> I, I like simplicity. Really, I do like fancy cuts, and I do like um, I love stamping. But when it comes to um, spending hours um, on painting something or um, colouring it, it, it doesn't appeal. So for the next one, let's have, I've got a green there, but I don't know if that's the same green. Oh yeah, it's the same green. So let's stick that there like that and get my water brush. And what I'm doing, a lot on the side, what I'm doing, I've got this cloth. I, I do wash this out, honestly. It's quite stained because I've used it for paint and things. And I just go over it like that, squeeze it a little bit to get this clean. There you go, and then we're going to do a green one. Okay, there are no set rules. We can do whatever we like. It's our design. They give you the bases, the stamp, and you do what you like with it. That's it, really. One thing I didn't do with the others, which I'm going to do with this, is um, quite often, like I did with this, with colouring the edges, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just uh, colour the edges with a slightly darker colour. I th I'm not going to use black because I think black is too strong, but I'm going to use this hickory smoke just because I've just thought of doing it and that's what I've got there. So we'll let that dry and now we'll go back to these ones. And this I really like these um, colours, this hickory smoke, I think it's very nice and I've actually used it in the background here to stamp and you'll see that shortly. Okay, I think it just finishes it off. Oh, that's it, pull it out there. I think it it'll take takes where you've cut it, where it was cut white card underneath, it just takes that white edge away. Stick that there. Uh, 
And we have to remember that nothing has to be perfect because this is our take on on um, these stamps. So we can cut off. I did cut off the antenna. I just thought it was too fine to try. There was a time when I would have cut round it, but you know, life's too short, really. And at the end of the day, <laughs> does somebody know that you've spent five minutes trying to cut round? something which will probably get knocked off anyway so this is very very popular thing to do is to go round the sorry if that was out of shot is to go round like this it's a little bit wet actually I might heat it dry it shortly just gives it a bit of a and then I'll also go around the one that's going to go inside. There we go. It is literally like watching paint dry, isn't it? But there you go. Okay. The next thing we're going to do for the front, it's quite exciting, is we're going to make um, these, now of course you, you can do whatever you want, but I decided this was going to be a new home card, I thought it was suitable. So I've got some, uh, I've got lots of dies and they're all organised in, I'm quite organised with my dies, but what I do have is a die set that where the, I don't know if you can see that, where the alphabet is all in one. So you don't have to place, you know, I've got some other ones where you have to place the individual um, letters on, on the sheet. So what I do, this is next cut one. So what I do, um, when I cut them, obviously I don't use them all. For new home I needed two E's. So I cut it twice. Now, I'll show you what I did. I took a piece of plain white cardstock and I think I'm going to have to do this because um, I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to have a couple of E's out of that. I took a piece of plain white cardstock. I went over it with the shabby shutters, as in that background. Then, and then I use this fabulous stuff, which is called embossing glaze, and it's um, Tim Holtz um, distress embossing glaze uh, by Ranger. Quite new to the market, I think these. I think they've been out a couple of years now, but he's just released, this is a new colour, Rustic Wilderness. And basically, it has lots of different ways you can use it. So the idea is that you use embossing, uh, an embossing watermark stamp, which is Versamark, or any make, doesn't matter. I've got a wow one here as well. Because as I said in my last video, this is incredibly dry now, so I, I needed um, a wow one. Tim Holtz also does one that's on a stick, which would be a little bit easier. And you basically just pull it over this. And the idea of this um, distress is that you sprinkle it over and then you heat it. And because it's got different um, thicknesses, you can't see them because they're, they're tiny, but they're kind of, some are big grains, some are small grains. Um, and, and the way they clump together, you, you pour it on, then you tap it off as much as you can, even creating areas where it's not been. And then I just um, use the heat tool on it to, to get this glaze. Now you can see what I've done there. So in order to get my letters, I um, did it twice. So what I'm going to do first, I think I'll need definitely the two E's um, because I would have used these. So um, really, do I want to bore you to death with this? Let me just see what we've got. So we've got the capital. But in fact, actually, what I'll do is I won't do that. I'll I can leave that to the end. Let's see how far we get. Because I don't what I don't want to do is, is I really don't want you to watch paint dry. But this is a fabulous uh, way of doing things and, and you can get that you get that more I don't, I don't want to say it's not homemade, handmade look. Also what I did, I went round it with a green P 
pencil just to, to highlight it but you can use anything you could just use plain card if you wanted to you could use plain green card you could stamp um, if you've got some stamps you could use any stamp that you want okay so that's that if you want me to show you doing it if I if I get time at the end I'll do it at the end but I'm sure um, it's really isn't rocket science okay so to go on to the background now the background I use um, I don't use stamp press for this I use another crafty individual stamp this was in their launch recently, but it is quite an old um, stamp. They do tend to, um, put, I bought a, a, a like a set and this, they had a couple of ones that had been launched before and they have these new ones. So this is really lovely. It's called Crackle and number one, one six. And all I'm going to do, and this is how we distress things. Now you can use any background stamp and you'll see in a minute I'm also using something different inside but to get that effect and I don't think I'm going to be using that again so I'll get my cloth because I'm probably wrong. that's it stick that over there okay no need no need for a stamp press for this, I don't think. But what we have got is one of these. Oh, that's it. Okay. And let's just do this. I'll just go randomly now I'm gonna I'm going to uh, ink it up every time because I I don't want um, where it looks as if it's more faded and I don't care if they don't match up that doesn't matter and in fact what I did do um, is on the inside one I, I went over it several times afterwards because it wasn't being covered over as much as uh, this one is so And I love red red rubber stamps are amazing. You can do such a lot with them. I will show you. Um, oh gosh, I've got so many ideas of things that I can show you. But one of the things you can do with red rubber stamps is um, there is such a thing as UT, which is ultra thick embossing powder. And you can use a red rubber stamp. You can melt a load of it, and then you you stick it into it, and it's just amazing. I will show you that at some point. Not today, that's for another day. Okay, so let's go here. And it is all a bit random and you don't you don't have to there's there's no start and end point. I do understand um that you can carry this on if you want to, but you know I don't know why you would want to, to be quite honest. I'm gonna dry that because you may be able to see that it is a little bit wet, so Now you can do lots of things with this, you could add more colour, you could add sparkly bits, there's all sorts. Um, I normally do actually, one of the things I do is spray sprays on it so you get lots of, um, you know, splashes and things, but I didn't do that this time. No doubt you'll see that in the future. Now let's put that to one side. Oh, what I'll do, because I'm a mucky pup. What I'll do is I'll wipe my hands. I'll have to use my cloth because I have no idea where any wipes are. So this is just a little chamois leather that I use. Um, I generally use these for cleaning stamps with. It does get cleaned, but there's permanent stains on there. Okay, right. Now the next bit, which is quite exciting is something that I like to do and that is the inside. So what we have for the inside is a whole sheet of card which is there. 
whole sheet of card, A5 card. This card I'm using actually is a Crafty Individuals card as well. I use all different sorts of card. I, I, um, if I'm going to be doing a lot of colouring, I'll use watercolour card um, or multimedia card. And sometimes I use the bobbly side, sometimes I use a smooth, sometimes cold pressed, sometimes hot pressed. It all depends. It just depends what mood I'm in, really. This one is um, Crafty Individuals, and it's something they've commissioned themselves. And uh, it's ultra smooth. It doesn't take a lot of water. Um, I tried that when I first got it and it, it's not very good with a lot of water. What happens is it starts uh, pilling and, and going a bit strange. But for these techniques, it's it's fine. So what I did, I thought, well, I'd like to have that in there. Give it a bit of a oomph. So I did no more than do what I've just done on the outside there. I just did the same, uh, coloured it with shab shabby shutters which will do because I don't have one prepared. Let's use my brush for that. I think it's that one. Get a piece of paper back. And all over it I go. And because it is a, a smooth one, you don't get, if you use this, if you do this in watercolour card, you, you get all the different undulations and bobbly bits. But because this is smooth, you don't. It's, it takes also, if you use um, VersaFine ink or any of the inks, when, when you're stamping something, it, there's, it's quite open, it takes quite a while uh, to dry, it doesn't dry instantly. So let's get my card. Oh, perhaps I can probably do a little bit more before I use that. And again, just I'm not quite sure what these bobbly bits are that come up on here. But who knows? Who knows? Right, so again, Now one thing I could do, that I didn't do on that one, which might be quite nice actually, is once this is dry, to do the edge again in the hickory smoke. So, sorry, noise again. Now, all card has moisture in it. So if I was to put this onto the glass mat and heat it, it would all be wet underneath. So it's always best to hold it up. And quite often, um, a lot of people do all their heating from behind. But I like to see what I'm doing, so I'll brush those bits off in a minute. I need to pick that up. It gets very, very hot. Yeah, I, think, I think that probably do. Because the um, paper has a sheen, it's kind of shiny as well. There you go. Okay, let's get the hickory smoke out again. This could look quite nice, or it might look awful. But I think doing the exaggerated. Sorry if I keep going out of shot. I'm, I'm not used to it at this angle. And hopefully you can see better this time. I. I <clears throat> I've had to buy some kit to to be able to <laughs> to use my um, to, to be able to record because before I, where I set it up it was made things quite dark so hopefully you can actually see what we're doing right nothing more glamorous than that that just will add a bit of an edge to it but one of one of the things we are going to do is we're going to use. A stencil and the stencil we're going to use is one by imagination crafts and it's called dots and that's what I used in there oh yeah, well you will do that shortly beg your pardon jumping the gun because I want to use the stencil I love using stencils <clears throat> let's get on with this so we are back to the hickory smoke and we are doing this god I'll give you a headache keep jumping around all over the place because I'm excited <laughs> So, 
So when I did this um, the other day, the best thing to use as well, I've got to say, if you're not using a stamping platform, the best thing to use is some sort of like mouse mat or something where you can press down because otherwise, you see where that gap is? You'll get that because you're not, you can't push into the paper. Okay, you can see the difference now. It's come out. There you are. Okay. And this rubber mat I bought years and years and years ago. And it's it's for um it's for per Pergamano, it's for using the Pergamano tools when you're <clears throat> cutting out all the fine and doing all your stippling and and I it's not something I'm into, but I think it'd been reduced to about two pounds fifty and I think they're about ten pounds. But I always thought it would come in handy and it comes in handy for lots of things interesting isn't it things we pick up as we go that's it that's it I think I'll put a bit more in that bit there that's it a bit more over there there you go seems to be something there right a bit there perfect fantastic I do, um, I know lots and lots of people don't clean their stamps, but I do. It's just, they're an investment and you want them to last a long time. So, I, I just think they look nice as well. I don't like them if they're, I mean, if they're stained because you've used stays on or something like that, then so be it. But, hey, you don't want to see me putting things away. It's just, leave that like that, stick that in there fine right there you go let's stick that down there I'll just give that another another blast and then you can see it's actually drying okay put that to one side now we're going to do the embossing uh, the stenciling. I'm just going to get another piece of paper which I'll make to pick up. Okay. It's a bit fresh. Fresh piece of paper. Okay. Here we are. So, what we're going to stencil is the inside of the card. Now, there you go. There's the card. There's the stencil. Imagination Crafts make wonderful stencils. They make um, a lot of metal stencils as well. Now this stencil, because of the way, uh, because of the how I'm setting this up here, I really want it to the ends, and this doesn't. This kind of fades out a lot at the ends, and all the information is in the middle. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to concentrate on. Doing it one piece at a time. Let's move that out of the way. Move that there. Push that there. Okay. So all we need to do, different ways you can do this. You can you can use these tools. It's quite nice to use these ones because they're um, easier, they're quicker. And I used for this one, I used a distress oxide brushed corduroy just to ring in the changes a bit with the colours. Again, I've got that underneath, but I'm going to use this because it's it's quicker. We don't tend to for stenciling nowadays. We always used to use a flat-ended brush, and would ch -ch -ch -ch. but I don't know why it's changed. But we we don't tend to do that now. Perhaps it's because we've got these other things available to us. So basically, this is what we do. I do have. You can st stick this down. You can. Um, I. I do have fancy mats and things for, oh, that's not clever, is it? She said, wishing she'd stuck it down. There you go. 
I've got I've got a mat that stencils that you use magnets with and all sorts, but not on this. There you go. It doesn't matter if it's is more if it's heavier than others, but of course this is quite a distinct pattern. So we can and that's not that one, is it? It's that one. We can go back over it if we want to. Just get a bit more up there. No problem. And then we'll do it down here. And again, it doesn't have to be. Um, but what I do want, I do want it. Let's do it like that. And it's it's always interesting how um, what's going to come out because you, you really don't know. It, it, <coughs> it is a bit potluck. Most of this won't be seen actually. That's fine. A bit heavier up there. Doesn't matter. Let's put that there. Let's put that there. Um, I will just give this a quick wipe. And what you should do is wipe it onto a. Because really, this is a toofer. That's what they call the toofer. You can put this onto a plain piece of card, and by wiping it through like this. You actually get um, a second lot of prints, especially if you don't. This I think this cloth's quite wet, so just wipe it off. And you'll see what I mean. I mean, if this was hard underneath, you would get you'd get more pieces out of it, as you can see. So. I'm going to swap my hands because I know at some point I'm going to pick up the card and get ink all over it. Right, there we are. Let's turn that over. We can actually turn it back that way, can't we? I don't know what that is. That's some rogue thing. So, for the inside. Now, this is going to go on the inside, but there's a pop-up. And... That pop-up, I don't know if you can see, there's a little thing holding it up. There it is, hold on, let's go the right way. There you are, holding it up. So, there's different ways you can do this. I've actually got, um, I've been, I don't know if I'm, I've mentioned before, but I have been crafting for years and years and years. And so, of course, I've got a, a tool that would make your pop-up for you. And it's, um, and I'm going to put it on the blog just because they still make this. But it makes, it's a die set. And basically, what it gives you, in fact, I've got one here. It gives you different, I don't know if you can see that, different heights of, um, of these pop-ups. You've got... Um, this one that's and then you can add additional ones on top you've got those ones there etc etc but I know it's an American um, this Stampenders is American and I I bought this I've had it a long time but I bought it uh, from an American shop so um, and obviously it was shipped over so I know nowadays I don't know whether if you ordered it from Amazon which is where I saw, I've seen it recently I looked it up whether uh, the import tax is going to be too much and we need to look into these things now because obviously with, with um, us coming out of the EU everything that's coming in we're paying more duty um, than we were before I think they're enforcing it more I think that's more to the point so I used one of these but you don't have to use one of those what you can do is where have I put it? It's here somewhere. You can make your own. Make your own pop-up. So this is the dummy run. And basically, all you would do is... I'll show you. I'll show you what you will do. You'll get your scoring board, which is here. And we want to score in the middle of this. 
So we just want to score in the, in the middle. Now I know this is A5, um, and so I know how wide A5 is. So basically, we get... This is my little... I've got loads of different scoreboards. I've got one... I use this one for small things, obviously, but I mean, it's not big enough widthwise, but it's just really handy. But I've got big ones, and um, they're just a bit cumbersome on this desk. So we know that this is half of an A5, uh, A4. So this is eight and two thirds. So, yeah, eight and two thirds. Uh, yeah, eight and a quarter, actually. That's funny, that must be a different size. Yeah, that's eight and a half, it's eight and a quarter. So we want to do it at four and a, well, I don't have to do that, do I? Four and one eighth there. So what we can do now, what we what we don't want to do. Oh, no, that's fine. So what we want to do is score down there like that, and then fold it over, fold it over, and do that. Put that away because that's we don't need that now. Now, when I was working this out the other day, obviously I'll use a smaller piece of card, but it really depends on how high you want your um, pop up to be. So we know that we want to cover this. So actually, this is fine. And the other thing that we have to make sure is that when you get your card, and you have to do this before you glue it in, because obviously you won't be able to cut it. So you get your card. You need to make sure that you pop up. So use this as a template. You will not be able to see it when you close. So you can with that one, you see. So if it's on there, you can see it. So you need to adjust this, the height of this accordingly, or the depth of it accordingly. So how you do that? This, I cut at down there at seven eighths. So I probably would go for three quarters of an inch, just to make sure that it doesn't stick out side the card. So we go down three quarters of an inch, you find the centre, as with all things, find the centre. So we know that this is five and seven eighths, say. So I was wondering if I had it written down, that was all. So we've got five and seven eighths, we want to get to half of that. So, um, <laughs> how, how I got off the two things is, well, we know that's two, um, um, a quarter of an inch off of six. So basically, it's, no, it's actually, that is five and three quarters. That's fine. So two and a half, two and three quarters. So we know we need to be two and seven eighths is the center. So just get a pencil. And if it's easy for you, round it up. I quite often do that. Okay, so if you can see that, so we need to go, it's not three, it's there. And that should be half. Then what we want to do, because obviously we want to find out, we want if you want this in the middle, you may not want it in the middle, you might want to put it over there. If that's the case, just make sure that when you put your, your uh, embellishment on the front that it covers it. Because it's no good if you put um, it too far over. Um, and A, well, if we put it too far over, it'll make it a bit flimsy anyway. So I think the best thing to do, find that. And then whatever width you want it to be. Now, we could go as wide as whatever we want, really. We can go, that's three and a quarter wide. So we could have that three and a quarter wide. So this is an inch wide. So we could say, um, I would just do half inch either side, to be quite honest. So there's your... There's your, there's your, and there's your, there's your. So that's how far we are. We're going to come down. As I said, we're not going to come down quite as much. So I think we'll just come down. There's, so that's half. So sorry, I keep taking it out. So that's half an inch. 
and that looks like three quarters of an inch so I think we'll take it slightly under that that's not that's slightly over so we do three quarters of an inch so the best thing to do is to go down like that and in fact I'd be able to see it better if I took the white paper from underneath this is the only um, bit of measuring that we'll have to do so three quarters of an inch is there and then we go that side and three quarters of an inch is there and then basically that's just a straight line and then basically you can use whatever you want to cut in it so you can use scissors um, oh the other thing um, I do need the scoreboard this is easier to do this at this point before you cut it so so what you want to do and I found this is the easiest way to do it so stick that there marry up your two dots this is just very 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 basic measuring is that on a make sure we're on a thing that's it and then between that one and that one we can do our score line okay so we've got that and then all we do is cut down between these two this bit here that's all we do between the dots you won't see this because this is all going to be on the back anyway so that's it and okay so um apologies that's moving now uh, basically what happened the <laughs> camera stopped recording um, probably right at the crucial bit that you need so once you've scored here cut there and cut there what you need to do is bend it backwards and forwards let's move that piece of paper out of the way then open it up and the camera had actually stopped recording um, and I'd finished the card and I hadn't realised so we go back into just burnish those folds and then you have your the inside of your card now what I did that's exactly how you do it. So basically, what I did, I then, I'll get a card blank to show you. If we can imagine that this is the, the card blank and it's all decorated inside. I then took this like this and glued it down. Now the easiest the easiest thing to do to glue it, I find, is to use a wet glue. Don't use I don't use tape. And one of the reasons is you have to it's quite difficult. As you can see well I you, you didn't see that me ha, you didn't see me do this. But um, when I um, put this into the card here, it was actually flat. But what happens with um, movement um, and just folding it backwards and, and, and stuff like that when the glue's wet, it kind of doesn't stay there's always a little bit of less give but if you use tape of any sort you have no that's it once you put it in there that's it you can't move it around so the best thing to do is to use a, a wet glue um, and, and possibly not one that is really quick drying so I would go for Kalau really stick it in I would stick I'll stick one side in first like that then put the glue on top here and close it there now obviously every time you open it because it's not set yet you're going to get a problem so what I then did is I took my bone folder and just pushed it right into the into the um, fold and then just held it down and I actually just left it um, uh, probably about 10 minutes five minutes something like that just to sit just to make sure that it's adhered then what happens when you open it up of course you've got your pop-up um, you, there might be a little bit of wriggle room if it won't lay flat but even mine laid flat after that but it's, since it's dried out it's not as I mean there's a little bit but it's passable and then all you do you take your embellishment and you stick it onto the front as you can see in this one 
that's just sitting on the front there and you just and then you've got your postcard or your your sorry your new home card the other thing that I was going to talk about um, with this is that when you're creating these when you're creating these pop-ups you don't have to just have one pop-up you can have many so you could just cut different sized ones if you wanted to um, you can cut it longer I probably would only do that if it was a much bigger card because this is sufficient this will hold up whatever size the maximum of embellishment that you've got like in this one because it's not very big but if you had a, a big card and you wanted to you know have more a, a much bigger embellishment then you I personally would leave uh, that there cut it that far down which I think was a three quarters of an inch down to there but I would cut it further up here and that's there's several ways you could do that you can cut it like this first of all and then just extend that and cut it up there what you need to have is to make sure that you've got your fold in the right position so that was it really um, I apologize for any uh, <laughs> some of the I have put a couple of comments on where you can see where I've put um, I keep saying basically I also keep saying so, so I need to change that as well. Thank you very much for being with me with this card. It has been a bit of a challenge this side of the camera, but these things are sent to try us, aren't they? Um, look forward to uh, the next one. Speak to you soon. Bye.